In this video, we show how to construct colimits as reflexive coequalizers in the Eilenberg Mohr categories over a co-complete category. Recall that a pair of morphisms, F, G, is a reflexive pair if and only if F and G have a common section, S. We first show that if a category A has coequalizers of reflexive pairs and binary coproducts, then it has coequalizers. For the proof, if we are given an arbitrary pair of morphisms F and G, let S A and S A prime be the coproduct injections of objects A and A prime. And to find the morphisms induced by the universal mapping property of the coproduct, bracket F identity A prime and bracket G identity A prime. Then we see that the inclusion S A prime is a common section of bracket F identity A prime and bracket G identity A prime, realizing it as a reflexive pair. So we can form the coequalizer H of these two morphisms. Then if given a morphism K from A prime to B, we see that K bracket F identity A prime is equal to K bracket G identity A prime if and only if KF is equal to KG. Therefore, the universal mapping property of H enjoys the universal mapping property of the coequalizer of F and G, which completes the proof. We can now show the main result. Let E be a co-complete, respectively finitely co-complete category, and T a monad on E. Then the eilenberg mohr category for the monad T has reflexive co-equalizers if and only if the eilenberg mohr category for the monad T has co-limits, respectively finite co-limits. The reverse direction is a fortiori, since reflexive co-equalizers are instances of finite co-limits. For the forward direction, by the lemma above, it is enough to show the eilenberg mohr category for the monad T has co-products, respectively finite co-products. So let xi theta i be a family, respectively finite family, of eilenberg mohr objects. We use a sigma sum notation for the coproduct in the eilenberg mohr category, and the square cup notation for the coproduct in the base category E. Since coadjoints preserve co-limits, we have ft on the coproduct of the objects xi isomorphic to the coproduct of ft xi. And similarly, ft on the coproduct of ut ft xi is isomorphic to the coproduct of ft ut ft xi. Therefore, the coproduct of ft sigma i and the coproduct of epsilon t ft xi is a reflexive pair since the coproduct of ft eta t xi is a common section. So we can take the coequalizer h. Recall that the t actions theta i are the coequalizers of ft theta i and epsilon ft xi. Then since the inclusion morphisms si and si prime make the square on the left commute sequentially, by the universal mapping property of xi for each i, there exists this unique morphism sigma i from xi theta i to x theta. We claim that this cocone formed by the sigma i is the coproduct we're after. If we were given another cocone ri, we see that the morphisms bracket ft ut ft ri and bracket ft ri induced by the respective coproducts make the bottom left square commute sequentially since each ri is t equivariant and the co-unit epsilon is a natural transformation. Therefore, by the universal mapping property of H as a co-equalizer, there exists a unique morphism K such that KH is equal to sigma bracket FT RI. We want to show that K is the unique factorization of the cocone RI through the cocone sigma I. We have K sigma I theta I is equal to KH SI, which is equal to psi bracket FT RI SI. And this is equal to psi FT RI. But FTRI is the morphism TRI and thus is equal to RI theta I since RI is T equivariant. Then since sigma I is epimorphism since it is a co-equalizer, we have K sigma I is equal to RI for each I, which is what we wanted to show and completes the proof.